The claps are for microphone sensitivity testing. I can't tell you the amount of videos that I've made where I've done a whole... I can't tell you the <laughs> number of videos I've made where I've done a whole video here and then I've realized it hasn't recorded the sound. All right, so what this video is, I'm gonna make a couple more videos on it, but this is gonna be a quick one because I don't have the, God, imagine, imagine how powerful I could be if I had like a camera crew. I'm telling you, man, if I had a camera crew, like if I had a crew of a couple people, like editing software and like graphics and stuff, we could go out like on the road and, man, I think it'd be a good TV show. I do. All right, so here's the deal. This is very important, though, okay, in drummer town. Now, I'd, this has to do with the microphone sweet spot. And of course, the light is being what? There we go. Oh, there's nothing like a piping hot condenser microphone. Mm. Anyway, so here's the deal. I'm going to show you. It might not be too... It might not be so clear from this angle, but this is the first video I'm gonna do. The microphone sweet spot, which in my opinion, you then use as the nucleus to build the rest of the sound around, okay? For me, this is an optimal sound. Remember, my opinion has always been that, and, and it, it makes sense if you think about it. I mean, I'm not gonna automatically poo-poo poo -poo on the fact that you know once you know 24 and 48 channel, um, boards and stuff became available. You could put like three microphones on the snare, two on the hat, you know, one on the top of the tom. You know, people put like the 421s on the toms. You might have one of those uh, SM81s and then an SM57 on the snare, and then the underside of the snare might be an SM57. <gasps> put another 81 on the hi-hat. Maybe sometimes people used to put like lavalier mics and stuff. You can do that. I mean, records and everybody get a great sound, but what I'm saying is it's kind of like when you put drums in a room or a space, that is essentially kind of like the effects pedal of the drum set, in a sense. I mean, it is. The acoustics down here are pretty good. And I will say this, I've mentioned this in another video. And there was a fellow I saw on YouTube, he had a really cool uh, video where he played the drums and he had tom-toms that he put microphones in front of and there'd be sympathetic resonance which was a neat concept, but back to now here in my studio. This, what I have here, is one of these, hang on. And I'm not on the payroll of this company, although if they want to send me a little check of rooney that wouldn't be turned out. Stand by. I was walking down Bottom Avenue and dipped, okay, here we go. I'm using an MXL V250. There's one in here. Yeah, I have a couple, two, three of them, okay? God, I should have mentioned this to George. He just bought another one. I could have just sold him this one. Don't tell him I said that. All right, so, because what I want to do is, I think there's, there's a few different sweet spots, but what I'm saying is the grand pappy of sweet spots, the grandest pappy is, so here, this is what it looks like. Sometimes these babies go on sale, okay, but I think they're a damn good condenser microphone. Um, so the primary spot then, which then you can build around, and this is done anyway, even in closed miking. I mean, they put microphones around the room to pick up cymbals. Sometimes there's sweet spots with cymbals, and you might do a little EQ just to roll off. You know, any cymbal you have when you hit it, you're going to have psh, and also a little, okay? Sometimes you don't notice that in the mix, and sometimes you can EQ that out, sometimes it's the placement of the microphones. So I'm gonna show you the sweet spot that you can then build everything around. Now check this out. So what I'm doing here, see how I have this. Now on a lefty kit, it would be the opposite. But so what I'm gonna do, check this out. Now here, people get concerned about like, wait, where's the, is it an extra inch? You, wait, is it the exact spot? What you wanna do is just watch this. It's this, it really is this simple. If I'm sitting at my drums, now this is important, forgive me, you know what, for the love of God. This is my Phil Collins, oops, uh-oh, this is my, gosh darn it. This is the Phil Collins. 
Hang on. Uh. Uh. This is my, you know what? Oh my god. I had to destroy it a little because I was using it a wee bit on the, um, on my effort. I'm just going to go like this. This is, It's just easier because I, when I have my headphones on, this is what I do. Let's see, tell me that. So, I'm so, uh, hang on. I'm sorry. You know what? Seriously, to my, to my fans and people that watch these videos, I, I don't mean to be such a skull. But I am. All right, let's just leave this little fuzzy thing off. There was a story. I went to a, uh, there's a story, sorry. Be patient with me, please. God damn it, you mean the whole time this frick, you, you know, no, I'm just turning down the, the reverb. You're gonna have to live with it the first 20 minutes of this video. I went to Fenwick High School in Oak Park, Illinois. And this is a true story. Back in the early 80s, I wasn't there yet, but they used to dissect pigs for biology class. And somebody cut the nose off a pig and was walking around all day going, oink, uh, oink. I thought that was pretty funny. Of course, he probably is, has a freezer full of heads in the basement. Now, all right, so here we are. Sorry about all that reverb, but it's the way it goes. Okay, this is when you're a skull like me, it's the... So, I would normally have the headphones on. This is my recording at first. But so check this out. I'm sitting here, right? Here's my right shoulder. I don't have very broad shoulders. But straight up here, okay? The microphone literally, it can't be too far up. You could. I mean, for your own particular sound, you can ask around with how close or how far you want it. But I find this to be the sweetest of spots, okay? Now... Glenn Johns and a lot of other engineers, Eddie Kramer, they will. There's a, a concept called phase with microphones, which has to do <clears throat> with kind of like, um, let's just say it, it. It let's just say there's a time if you're using more than one microphone, if it's in a slightly wrong position, it will cancel out. Both microphones will be suboptimal. And you have to either move one of the microphones to where they get beefy again. There's also a phase switch thingy, which I really don't understand. But this is what this video is all about. This microphone, I have generally pointed at the snare drum, okay? Now, the neat thing is, we'll find, if you've ever stood around anybody when they're playing the drums, the sound of the tom-toms from the side, okay? Here's the cylinder, right? The sound from the side is, is, is very tinny. Because what's happening is even though the drum's vibrating, the sound of the heads, it, 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 it's, the, the waves are coming off above and below. I mean, that's why they put a microphone above the tom and below the tom. In this position, you have the waves of the tom-toms being generated coming up. Like if you stick your hand in a puddle or in a pool, the waves go out, going straight up. Okay, so this microphone is picking those up. And you also have, the, obviously, the snare drum being picked up. Cymbals will hit, crank out a lot of smaller waves, tighter waves, which are higher pitch. And, of course, the bass drum, the cylinder, is facing this way. So you're really getting, in other words, the toms, the drums, the cylinders are all, in essence, facing in more or less a, a, the best fashion, even though the bass drum's coming this way and these are coming kind of straight up. This is sort of, a, it's just the optimal space I have found. Okay, remember, it's, I mean, I haven't discovered this. There's probably all kinds of engineers uh, that know this. But not everybody, uh, people always remark in my videos like, your sound is so great. You know why? Because it's, so much of it is, it's just, you know, you tune the drums up pretty good. And uh, use a, get a condenser mic. You can use ribbons too. But just get a nice condenser mic. These babies aren't expensive. Now watch. So I'm sitting here, here's my shoulder. I'm reaching up. And here's the mic. Do you see that? Right here. So literally, you can just go like this, okay? It's this easy. Let's say everybody's like, ooh, ah, ooh. Like if I went like this, and it went up three inches, I'd smack it. Sorry. Oh, you're right, buddy. That microphone. So listen to this. Now adjust your volume toggles just a wee bit. Well, just because it might be a little louder here, okay? Oh, my God. I'm lowering my voice. Let's see how this freaking video turns out. All right. So watch, I don't have, <clears throat> the snare drum is not muffled. None of the drums are muffled. 
Okay? So watch. Be prepared. I'm going to start a little soft, and let's see how it works out. That sounds pretty beefcakey. So what I want you to do is rush out, get yourself a condenser microphone, get a pretty decent one. Remember, the con the microphones made today are a hell of a lot better than they ever used to be. You know, it's the same like with drums. You know, if you buy like even like five or six hundred dollars set of Birch or made for drums now, they're terrific. They sound great. They're not as built. They don't. They're not as built as well. They are not. They are not built as well in 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 sort of a. <clears throat> Detail orient fashion maybe is a five thousand dollar set of drums you had. But now, really, if you notice, I mean back in the day, you really if you didn't get an AKG or a Neumann or a Shure, those were like the companies you went with. Okay? Nowadays you have all you have blue and you have this MXL and you have Samson and all these other things. The microphones are pretty good, okay? So let's just play again for a minute. So what I can do is let me just add a little reverbium. God, I, I bet that reverb was so for the love of God. But so this is important. So the reverb's back up here. This spot, okay? Now you can ass around with this, especially if you have just one microphone. You don't have to worry about phase issues. For your personal taste, you know, you can set. Sometimes people put it right above, which you could, but that'll be at the expense of the bass drum. So in that case, you might have a microphone on each end of the bass drum. But here again, you sort of get the optimal. If I start lowering this down, I'll get more bass drum because of the cylinder this way, but I'll get less of the toms. So again, I find this ex precise spot to be the sweet spot, okay? You know what I've been really trying to do? I've been trying to get my bass drum just so. Feel more bass control my bass drum, get the tail ends of some of those fills. So they're not all the exact same intensity. Instead of ba ba, I want, and then that last one beefy, so. videos on this why I'm not sure but this is helpful okay and again I might not even end up using this video if the reverb I had on the front end is way way over the top if it's you know if it's a little over the top it's not the end of the world so thank you for watching and, and really this will be very helpful for you this you're gonna record at your house or wherever this really is a it's the sweetest of sweet spots truly Okay, which then you can you can add in other microphones. So start with this theater. Okay, bring this one up, get it nice and beefy and balanced, and then slowly bring other stuff into it to see if it takes away from this or adds to it. That's the key. Okay. All right. So more videos on the way. You know, this is almost like the Opti Grab. Remember the jerk, the Opti Grab. Everybody's eyes were. Remember what? what oh, the jerk's a great movie. There's some great scene. Remember he's. He's not trying to put holes in those oil cans. He's trying to put holes in you. Oh, that was just a masterpiece. Mm, Bernadette Peters, I loved her after that movie. Ah. All right, so let's just uh, we'll wrap it up then. Just real fast, if anybody's asking, I have an 18-inch sound formula, Frankenstein's Thin Crash here. This is B15. Over here, I have my B20 alloy, B8 alloy, Heisty Giant Beat Multi. This is about 1,830 grams. It'd be nice to have about a 1,930, 1,950. And this is my Sound Edge hats. I have a 15-inch 1976 Sound Edge bottom paired with a right off the shelf. You can get it today. Giant Beat 15-inch hi-hat top. They sound nice. Thanks for watching.